Welcome to the Kim Commando Show podcast. This is a replay from earlier this year. Kim will be back soon. All right, I always like to start with something interesting. And this fits the bill, literally. I mean, a lot of people are confused about ChatGPT, how it works, what should you ask, how do you ask it questions, and who can you, can you really trust the answers? Well, imagine for a moment that you are Warren Buffett, and you are sitting there saying, hmm, ChatGPT, I need to phone a friend. So who does Warren Buffett phone? Bill Gates, of course. Of course. Okay. So Bill Gates goes over to Warren Buffett's house and sits down and says, hey, Warren, this is how chat GPT works. And so here's what Warren had to say about it. I actually said, take this song my way and write it in Spanish. Wow. Two seconds later, you know, it comes out and it comes out that it rhymes and it does all these wonderful things. <laughs> but the problem is, is that chat GPT just doesn't know how to tell jokes. <laughs> Now, you have to know Warren Buffett to know that he has like this corny sense of humor. So years ago, I was voted one of Fortune magazine's most powerful women in America. And there was one guy invited. And guess who it was? Warren Buffett. <laughs> so I went and did the keynote. And afterwards, I sat right next to Warren Buffett. And he were just chit-chatting. And he looks at me and goes, oh, Kim, don't make fun of me because I have a flip phone because I don't trust iPhones. And I was like, oh, come on, dude. We got to get you at the Times. And I said, you know, speaking of the times, I mean, you must feel like so powerful because you're like the only man in this whole auditorium with 3,000 women. I said, I mean, if you can't score here, Warren, let me tell you, <laughs> this is like, it's just not going to happen. So he actually looked at me and he said, Kim, look at me. I'm not the most attractive guy. I'm older. I'm in my 80s. You know what I have to do to score with a woman? And I said, what? He said, I had to buy Hanes underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I got it. And then he, then he said, here's another fun fact. Who buys the most men's underwear at Walmart? Who does? Anybody? Women. Women. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Women will buy men's underwear. I thought that was so interesting. Welcome to a happy Friday. Are you ready for just another exciting episode of Kim Commando today? We've got a, just a jam-packed show for you with not just one, but two amazing folks by my side. I'm talking about the amazing dynamic duo from commando.com and the newsletters. Of course, we have Allie Seligman first up. She's our amazing content queen. Hello there, Allie. Speaking of chat, GPT, I'm going to tell you all the things you don't want to say to it because, yes, your privacy. Uh, and then a little trick uh, that can maybe help you avoid some embarrassment either at work or with your friends involving Google Docs. And then, of course, we have our magnificent millennial and our very own Internet scout to tell us what's going online so we always sound hip. It's um, Matthew Heffel. I'm going to talk about how a Facebook group was able to bring a long-lost father and daughter back together after 20 years, as well oh, as how you can use Gmail to catch companies selling your data. Oh, yeah. wow, that's something. Hey, listen, if you're looking for a new way to enjoy the Kim Commando Today podcast, how about adding a little visual element to the mix? That's right. You can watch us do the podcast over at youtube.com slash Kim Commando. That's youtube.com slash Kim Commando. Now, imagine this. Your grandfather died many years ago, but you're still able to ask him for advice. What? What's going on? Well, it's a new world. It sounds unbelievable, but it's soon going to be a reality, according to Dr. Desse. He's a Silicon Valley computer scientist and the founder of multiple artificial intelligence platforms. They say by the end of this year, I meant by the end of this year, is that you could talk to your loved ones who have passed on. Hmm. Now, on Twitter, he urged folks to start recording their parents, anybody else who's older in the family. With enough transcript data, this new voice synthesis and video models there's a 100% chance that they could live with you forever after they've left the physical world. So he says, with all these recordings, an AI system will learn as much as it can about your loved one, then generate an avatar that looks like that person. So you can talk to them whenever you want, through your phone, your laptop, your computer, whatever it may be. And this isn't just fantasy. Companies like Deep Brain AI, they're already offering a service called Rememory. And you have to kind of pre-plan for your own death, but you do seven hours worth of interviews with Deep Brain, and then they're going to create this digital avatar of you for your loved ones so that they can talk to you for all time. Hmm. What do you think about this? 
is it going to create a, a situation where you can't like continue? Like you can't have that period of mourning. Mm. You can't kind of go Move through on. that. Yeah. I, it's a lot for me. It's a lot for me to handle. I think if I think about maybe it being someone that I only knew as a kid, like, you know, a great grandparent, an older grandparent, but somebody that I'm really close to, that seems really tough. I, I feel the same, Matt. Like it'd be hard to find yes, closure. It, would mm -hmm. be. it yeah. really would. It would. I think it would be too. Cause I was thinking of like with my mom, cause you know, we, yeah. we were like two peas yeah. in a pot. I mean, I lived with my mother, which I, I explained to her once. I said, I've lived with you for like, like 45 years of my life. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, you know, it is not because I live in your basement. Right. You know, not, not because of that. Okay. But, you know, it's always has been interesting to me when someone refers, when somebody who has died, they say, you know, the late whoever that person is, mm -hmm. the late whoever that is. You know, I'm always like, I just want to say like, dude, they're not coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Matt. So what's going on in your news world? I want to tell a really quick story. Her name was Jordan O'Neill, and she had a really interesting story that I read online this week. She was born in 1997, and pretty much immediately after she was born, her parents split up. So for the first eight months of her life, she majoritively lived with her father. And then her mom kind of like stole her and moved her to Alabama, where her mom almost immediately abandoned her to live with her grandma. So she lives with her grandma for another 20 years. And then sadly, in 2020, her grandma passed away. Now, she didn't have any other family. And she was really interested to try to get to know any other family that she might have had. And she was looking at all that stuff. And she realized she wanted to find her father, her biological father. Now, she didn't know how to get started with this. And she didn't know who to reach out to because not only was he not listed on her birth certificate, but her grandmother never told her his name. Oof. So she started reaching out to like family, friends and people like that and was able to actually find people that had known her mom a long time ago, around the time she was born. And she asked, did you know who the guy was? And they're like, no, but here's some pictures of all the times that we went out to clubs and bars and whatever. And so she found a picture of her with a guy that she thinks looked like her dad. She then went and posted that on Facebook groups in the area where she was born. Facebook groups in the locale in Detroit where she was born immediately. And Within 30 minutes, she had gotten dozens of responses who knew exactly who this guy was, <laughs> were able to give her his name and where he lived. Oh, my gosh. So she reached out to him. And before she could even say anything, he said, I think I'm your father. <gasps> and so they have been reconnected. And the best part is, is that she just had her first son. And so she's able to give her first son a grandpa to grow up oh. with. So oh, that one gave me goosebumps. It's a really cute story. Uh, you know what? So did I. I did. I. I did. I just. I got. Just got chicken skin yeah. when you said that. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh. You know what a great story that is. Crazy. You know, it's, a, it's a nice, uplifting. Because you know, so often you turn on the TV, it's like, ah, oh, China and Taiwan, mm -hmm. and you know, it's like, oh my, oh my gosh. Like, you know, I don't know if you're getting like that. I mean, like last night Barry actually got mad at me because he was in there watching. He was watching Fox News, mm. and now I'm coming in there at like quarter to six to make dinner. And I walk over to the TV and I just, boop. He's like, he's like, he's like I was waiting for that story. I'm like, I'm like, oh, Had enough. no. Yeah. No, I said, you know, this is like too much, too much. Mm -hmm. Nice story, Matt. Thank Thanks you. for sharing. All right. So, Allie, chat GPT and our privacy. What? Back to the bummer. Sorry to rain on the parade here. Actually, yeah, we use here at Commando, at least, we're using chat GPT all the time for lots mm -hmm. of stuff. It is so useful. It's so helpful. Um, like Warren Buffett, you could translate songs into different languages. You can do basically anything with this tool. But a little reminder, before you get too deep into worrying, oh my gosh, the robots are coming for my job. They're going to take over humanity. Let's talk about your privacy first, because that is the concern that we should have now. Uh, it, we'll wait on like, you know, our robot overlords until uh, a little <laughs> bit later. Um, by the way, we wrote about this in the current tech news. If you are not subscribed to our new newsletter, so missing out. I don't know yes. what you're doing with yourself. Today, uh, we got a review. Someone said, 
I pity the fool who doesn't get <laughs> Kim Commando's <laughs> current tech news. That was, you know, because you could just hear this. I pity the fool. <laughs> yeah. I pity the fool. Oh, man. Okay, so let's go over a little bit of what they collect. Um, this is all really without you doing much. OpenAI, which is the company behind ChatGPT, they collect your IP address, your browser settings, of course, all the questions you're asking, the conversation you have, your location, and the device that you're using, whether that's an iPhone, an Android, PC, Mac, whatever. They also collect the name of the device, the operating system, and the browser. So down to the detail of like, you know, this is Kim's iPhone using Safari. This is Ali's Android using Chrome, whatever it is. They share this information, of course, mm. with third parties. Mm -hmm. uh, they do say it's shared anonymously. Everybody always says that, right? And, right. and then there's all the stuff that you voluntarily provide. So when you make an account, you have to give over your email address, okay? Um, and then all the conversations you have, those are used to improve the AI model. That means someone is reading yes. these things. Mm -hmm. uh, there is very likely a person looking at all the things you say, which makes us think, oh, okay, I should be careful what I say. Um, it doesn't quite feel like... You know, as someone who's used it a lot, it doesn't feel like Google or another search engine where you have that moment of like, I'm not going to put anything private or personal mm. or too sensitive in here because I know it's Google. Because it feels so human, it kind of removes that yeah. element. And you might sure. say something sure. that you don't realize. Um, that's a great point, and, really. That's, a, that's an awesome point. And even just little details, right, that slowly if the more you accumulate this is how google works and all the rest they know who you are they know your life they know who's in your family maybe you say i need some gift ideas for my 10 year old nephew oh. um i need some i don't know i need to know the best things to do uh, or the best national parks where i live in my city you know and slowly but or surely I need to know if this rash is cancer <laughs> or yeah, you know. yeah. seriously <laughs> yes exactly yes. um the bad news is you can't delete specific things you say to chat GPT. So if you've said a bunch of stuff that now you're like, I shouldn't have done that, um, you can't. If you want to wipe everything, you can delete your account. I am not really <laughs> so sure that that is going to wipe out everything. Mm -hmm. um, they're probably at least bits of your account and your conversations are going to stick around. Um, and a reminder, if you're using this for work, don't put any confidential work information, anything from your job, trade secrets, follow your company's security procedures like you normally would. You know, if you wouldn't tell somebody in real life, don't put it into the chat bot. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't don't upload a business plan and say, please summarize this for me. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> just, Remember just when really, really, companies were yes. getting in trouble because people were putting in like you know, hey, I work at Google. Can you figure out this coding problem? No, we yeah. don't want them to have that. <laughs> no, no, it's, you know, and, and it's a good point because and it really, and it, that's a, a really important thing that you said because you don't feel like the almighty hand of Google is above you. Sure. Yeah. You you can go back and forth because I go back and forth because I was at, looking for trivia questions mm. and I said no, you know, those are boring. Get me something more exciting. <laughs> and then and then it gave me a trivia question. The answer is wrong. And I said, you know, you're such a dummy. And I came back and said, you know, and it, it gave me like this big red thing that says, you know, this is against our community guidelines. <laughs> like, like, oh, oh, you, bad. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah, so I'm gonna get banned. Banned. Um, hey, listen, coming up, I have some news about smart, smart sprinklers. Yes, smart sprinklers that we're installing. Uh, Matt is going to reveal his secret method to uncover data selling companies via email. And Allie's got an insider tip for perfectly polished Google Docs. And Allie, you're on joke duty, I hear, right? I am, yes. Uh, this is a pretty good joke. I'm going to give it seven and a half. <gasps> Faulty. I think one day we should do just like what Matt did. Okay, I gave this joke a seven and a half when in reality it was a zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just something like that. Or I'm just going to, my joke is a three. There you so, go. Uh, yeah, it's Always just a give three. it low. Hope you laugh. <laughs> All right, so stay right where you are. Hey, we're thrilled to have you with us on Kim Commando today and also every single day because you're just one of the smart ones because you know where you can find trusted, top-notch tech info. Now, with over 400,000 of our fellow tech enthusiasts, they also trust us with our daily email newsletters. And if you're not getting with them, 
I pity the fool, right? We pity that fool. I pity the fool. Uh, <laughs> head over to commando.com slash subscribe. Once again, that's commando.com slash subscribe. All right, this is part of the show where we like to give along some really great life tech hips, tips rather. Uh, and I'm going to talk about smart sprinklers because, as you know, I've had a house under construction for one, two, three, four, five, uh, yes, yeah, six years now. Six years. Uh, <laughs> let's see. The contractor said I could move in in January. Uh, that was in, he told me that last September. And I actually said, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, September, he told me I could move in February. February, I could move in March. March, I could move in in April. He still says I can move in in April, but there's no, there are no stairs. Um, uh, <laughs> you can levitate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. There's a rope. Uh, there's still some drywall <laughs> uh, that's still not up. And uh, sure. Um, let's see the flooring. Uh, the garage door is really special. The garage door, it takes 60 seconds to open and close. Okay. But wait, wow. it's, wait, there's more. Okay. I, can't, I still can't believe I'm saying this. The, the, he expects me to pull through my gate, okay, get to the garage door, get out of my car, push a button, let one minute, what? let the garage door go up. You have to hold down the button the whole time? Yes. Then, okay. I, then I let it go when it's up. Then I get back in my car and I pull in the garage. But wait, I get out of my car, and I go outside the garage, and I push the button. This is in Phoenix, where it's 120. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. As I told him, I think we've had garage door openers in cars, I don't know, for at least the last 25 years. <laughs> I mean, so we're still trying to fix that problem, I, but I digress. But the landscape contractor is fabulous. I love oh, this good. guy. Okay. So we, are, of course, are having this smart phone, smart house, rather. Mm. So we're putting in these Moen smart sprinkler controllers, and then they have smart wireless soil sensors. Okay. Hmm. Um, basically what it does, they say, you know, it cuts down on water usage, and then you have all these independent zones. And then there's what I really like is automatic weather skip. So if Ooh. it's raining, oh, guess what? We don't water the plants. How smart is that? Yeah. Right? Amazing. Uh, they say you can save up to 30% more water, 15,000 gallons annually compared to these clock-based controllers, which I had in the last house, which never worked, never, <laughs> ever worked. Uh, the water sensors, they monitor soil moisture up to one, three, and five-inch depths. And then also it adjusts automatically to where you live by your zip mm. code. Cool. And also by the heat index. <gasps> Ooh. Wow. Because, you know, here in Phoenix, you know that, that you... You know, in the middle of summer, you're like, oh, God, they're just thirsty. These are thirsty yeah. people out here, you know. And so you stand there with the hose and you're like, OK, some water for you, some water for me, some water for you, some water for me. I mean, that's just it. Tell you. And, you know, my neighbor at the last house, he used to leave his sprinkler running constantly. I mean, constantly. I'm talking about like days at a time. I would call him up. I mean, it was just so, so irrigating. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, Matt, save us with a great tip. Save us. We all know that companies are trying to gather our data to sell it, right? And we have a bunch of ways that you can stop this from happening over at commando.com. But if you're going to be signing up for stuff online, I have a really handy tip that you can use to find out who exactly is selling your data. So if you use Gmail, you may know this, you may not. This is really handy. Every Gmail comes with virtually an infinite amount of Gmail addresses. So if your Gmail is abc at gmail.com and you want to have another email address, you can type in abc, the plus symbol, and then whatever site you're signing up for. So say you're signing up for a new Pinterest account and you want to use this email, but you want to know if Pinterest is going to sell your email to another company as data. Well, you're going to put in your email, abc at gmail, but instead of you're going to do abc plus Pinterest at gmail.com. Then if you start to get spam to that ABC plus mm. uh, Pinterest at Gmail, then you'll know that it was Pinterest that sold your data. So it's really, really helpful to make sure that you're not selling, you're giving your info to companies that are going to be often selling it. Now, once they have your data, there is a whole bunch of ways you can try to get them to stop selling it. That's another whole thing that we have over at commando.com. <laughs> but I think the best way that you can use this tip is just tell your friends, be like, Hey, I went on this one service that was helping me do such and such and such and such. And I found out that they were selling my 
email to all these advertisers. So don't don't use them. So it's a really handy way to help out others too. It's like you're you know you get busted. They're busted. Yeah, That's just yeah exactly. exactly. And so I do that all the time with newsletters because I always mm-hmm. feel like except for ours. You know, a lot mm. of those, they all of a sudden you get on another list, another list, another list. So, again, you just you put your your name and then the plus sign, whatever it is, at Gmail, and then you get that free, disposable, yeah. infinite email address. <laughs> well, you know, Matt, just as I said, it was infinite. Remember remember Google just said you can't have over 5 million, you know, Oh, yeah. Docs. Gmail I mean, might so have a hidden thing that we don't know that you can only have 7 million email addresses. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. That's where they cap it. That's, that's Tell somebody gets mad. <laughs> yeah. So, Allie, this tip is one that you and I were talking about, and then and then you were like, I think we should tell more people about this. I'm like, <laughs> yes, we should. Yeah, here is probably a mistake that you have made if you use Google Docs often, or any of the Google Office fake software, right? Sheets, Docs, uh, spreadsheets, uh, whatever. So if you make these... Anybody that has access to it can go back and see the history of that document. Mm. So say I make a document, I am going to write up something for Kim and I'm writing it. I first I get out all my stupid ideas. Maybe I'm a little mad at Kim. And so I have a line in there that's like, oh, I can't believe Kim Commando is making me do this. (laughs) Whatever I'm typing. Right. And then I clean it all. That makes me feel good, Allie. You couldn't come up with like another example. I mean, like, (laughs) you know, like. That's all I got today. Like Nova took a crap in the car, you know, on the carpet in the living room or something like that. (laughs) No, this is a a workplace matter. Um, So I'm writing this all in this document. Right. And then I go through. I clean it up. I finalize it. I send it off to Kim. I just think, wow, I've sent my, my perfect document off to Kim. What if Kim gets curious and goes looking around? She can see every single version of this document that has existed. So she's going to see all my stupid ideas. She's going to see me saying, oh, Kim Commando, whatever it is. <laughs> so this could happen anytime you share a document with somebody. So my tip is a very simple one. Once you get to the final version of something, make a copy of the document. That way, you know, you just take all that, take all that information in there. You put it in a fresh document. It doesn't have any of the history. That's going to be the only thing that's in there. You might save yourself some embarrassment. Uh, and if you are thinking, oh my gosh, I've done that before. If nobody said yeah. anything to you, they probably didn't realize. So mm-hmm. don't worry about it. Just be smart going forward. Copy your stuff into a clean new document. That is the version you should send. Okay. Hmm. What you just did, Allie, is you just told everybody who got a document. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Let me go see what they said. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. So, so here's here's to speaking of documents. Here's here's a joke that you can use. Okay. So when you're out and about, and maybe you're talking about you know work type of stuff. Okay. Here here it is. Okay. A guy offered to document my entire life in Microsoft Excel, but I said no way. You know why? I didn't want him to spread sheet about me. <laughs> I like that one, didn't I? Like that, that was one? actually pretty That's good. good. I, saw, I, saw, I think I saw that on Twitter the other day. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, if you like quick tips like these, make sure that you get our Daily Tech Update podcast every single day, just 60 seconds. So wherever you get your podcast, just search for Commando with the K and then get the Daily Tech Update. All right, coming up, I have the What the Heck headline of the week, which is crazy. It's about a Jeep that went underwater. Uh, Matt, this is really fascinating. Matt's going to be talking about whether or not the Simpsons know the future. This is really crazy (laughs) stuff because there's this whole conspiracy theory that claims that the Simpsons can predict the future with this uncanny accuracy. And Matt has these examples to back it all up. And then Allie has a new way for us to make money that doesn't involve our feet and pictures, thank goodness. (laughs) And then also the joke at the end. So, hey, where are you going? Stay with us. So we rolled out these new newsletters, and let me tell you, they are fabulous. People are sharing them left and right, like, and they're also rating. So at the end of the newsletter, we say, hey, give us a rating. And so right before we came on to do the show, I checked it out. We had 10,698 thumbs up, okay, and then we had 542 thumbs down. Okay, so for anybody who just gave us the thumbs down, we don't like you. No, no, we appreciate you. <laughs> no, we but don't. a lot of this is coming because you're saying that as we look at and we do read every single comment, it, Ali, we talked about this, that, the, that maybe you're on Windows 7. Is that true, right? Uh, I have seen that one, yes. So a few people are saying 
it does, it's not displaying right on, you know, my computer, my phone, whatever it is. Here is a little tip for you. Again, we read all these emails. So if you are having technical difficulties like that, leave us your email address. I will email you myself and we will figure out why it's not working for you. It might be because yes, you're on Windows 7 or you're on, you know, Android 2 and we can't do much for you in that case. I'm sorry. But if there is something we can do to help, we will and we will try to make our newsletters look great for everyone we can. I pity the fool who doesn't follow <laughs> the newsletters. Pity that fool. Hey, sign up right now at commando.com slash subscribe, commando.com slash subscribe. All right, here's my what the heck headline of the week. I actually saw it. And I went, what? <laughs> police, police pull a Jeep out of the lake. They found a woman inside alive. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it all started when a fisherman called the authorities because he saw what looked like a black Jeep completely immersed in water. It was a Friday morning. It took the deputies about 18 minutes to reach the scene. It was at Lake of the Pines, which is between Dallas and Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay. When the cops arrive, they look inside and they see a woman submerged in the water in her Jeep, banging on the Jeep window. Okay. Uh, it turns out she was reported missing a few hours earlier, around 1230 in the morning. Oh so what gosh. was supposed to be Ooh. just a salvage job to get the Jeep out of the lake, the bottom of the lake. She was like 40 feet down or some crazy thing like that. Uh, a fisherman, the tow truck driver, they pulled the woman out of the Jeep. They got her into a fishing boat. Now, according to uh, Captain Chuck Rogers there, he's an investigator at the Marion County Sheriff's Office. They don't know how long the Jeep had been in the water or how the woman ended up there. That was the exact quote, how the woman ended up there. She drove her Jeep in there. That's how she yeah. ended up in there. What else? <laughs> <laughs> Aliens. Aliens. Okay. Moral of the story is that if you are going around country roads at 1230 in the morning on a Friday night, Saturday morning, and, uh, and it's probably dark and you don't know where you are, is that you should probably always drive a Jeep because we know <laughs> that it's water tight. Water tight. tight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That wow. is incredible. That's crazy. Can you imagine the relief that flooded through this woman's body <gasps> when she saw no someone come to save her? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but seriously, mean, can you like that would be no. so so scary? I, mean, I wonder wow. like I wonder if she like called somebody or maybe she didn't have a phone or does your phone work forty work underwater? Yeah. 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 That's, that's a good question. Really so yeah, so that's really a what the heck headline, isn't it? Much seriously. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. So, Matt, because I've been hearing about the Simpsons conspiracy theory for so many years. So if somebody's brand new to it, you have to start at the beginning. Okay. This has been a conspiracy theory on the Internet for 20 years, if not more. <laughs> I've been hearing about it since I was young on AOL, right? <laughs> now, the theory is that Matt Groening, the creator of the Simpsons, which has been around for 32, 33 years, is a time traveler <laughs> and he can go into the future and see what's going on. Then he goes back and makes the Simpsons and puts little Easter eggs in all of his episodes that hint at what's going to happen in the future. And there are a lot, there are <laughs> hundreds. I picked out a few just to give you guys examples, but if you are really interested in if this piques your interest, just Google Simpsons conspiracy theories and you'll find hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of these. Wow. <laughs> the first one is from a 1998 episode called When You Wish Upon a Star. And it showed that when Homer went to uh, 20th Century Fox, he was trying to get a show made. He was trying to become a director. And so he goes to 20th Century Fox and he says, oh, I want to do this. And like, oh, well, we just got new ownership, so we have to go to them. And the camera pivots to a picture of a poster that has 20th Century Fox now owned by Disney. This came out in 1998. Then, oh, wow. 22 years later, 20th Century Fox was purchased by Disney. Dun, dun, dun. So that's a little light one. Okay. The next one's kind of interesting. This one came out in 2004. It's called The Ziff Who Came to Dinner. And the episode doesn't really have anything to do with this single scene. It pans over to Homer, the main character, if you didn't know, standing in his living room. And he had just seen The Matrix. And it goes to the future of him standing in the same spot. And it has a poster of him that says Matrix coming out in 2021. Christmas 2021. It says Christmas <laughs> Matrix coming out 2021. Matrix 4 came out December 2021. 
I mean, why would they even put that in there? Okay, I got, I got another one. This one's more tech-based. It's kind of interesting. Okay. came out in 1995. And in the episode, again, it goes to the future. They say they're zooming to the future of 2010. So it's 15 years before that when this episode came out. And in the episode, Lisa, the daughter, has grown up and she's married and she's calling her mom, Marge. And in the call, she pulls out her phone and the phone has a screen on it where she can see and talk to her mom over a video (laughs) call. Now, the interesting thing is not that this was going to come in the future, but guess what came out in 2010? FaceTime. Hey. So Uh, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I got two more. I got two more. This one's really, really like one of the biggest ones online right now. This episode came out in the year 2000, and it is when the daughter, Lisa, is grown up in the future, and she becomes the president, and she's seeking re-election, and guess who she's running against? Donald Trump. (laughs) And in the episode, it shows him coming down a golden escalator to announce his candidacy for president almost with the exact camera angle as that famous time that that happened in real life. Oh, my gosh. So 16 years before that happened... They had exactly what it was going to be like. All right. The final one is very, very interesting because it's the most recent. Do you remember just a few weeks ago, everybody was talking about the Barbie movie and how this was was so crazy and all this happening. It was getting all these great reviews. And at that exact same time, something was happening again with President Trump. And I'm going to play this clip really quick. Though it was unusual to spend 28 minutes reporting on a doll, this reporter found it impossible to stop talking. It's just really fascinating news, folks. Good night. Oh, and the president was arrested. (laughs) (laughs) So at that same time that everybody was talking about the Barbie movie was when Trump was getting indicted. And they just happened to predict that in 1994. You know. So I don't know. know, It's it's it is kind of it's bizarre. If there was just one example You'd be yeah. like, well, you know, it was a crapshoot. You know, I called the psychic hotline or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this, you know, it does make you think. It That's five think. out of hundreds. Okay, counter theory. Okay. What if people looking for ideas for things were like, let me go watch some old Simpsons <laughs> to see. Like see. the Matrix people were like, when should we? Oh, remember that Simpsons episode? Maybe. Yes. You know, and if we put it there in December, then, then it's kind of like in-house promotion. Because hey, there you they'll go. know that it was December. Yes. I, I wish we had a time travel. If he's a time traveler, great. Yeah. Yeah. Give me more. I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. I mean, you know, maybe he can tell me when my house will finally be done. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> really. Hey, speaking of social media, make sure that you follow us. We are at Kim Commando everywhere. Instagram.com slash Kim Commando, which, by the way, if you haven't seen that AI, AI picture of me with fingers in my face, it's... <laughs> Very disturbing. So beautiful. It's gorgeous. Uh, Facebook.com slash Kim Commando and Twitter.com slash Kim Commando. You get the drill. All right. Coming up, if you're a shy person, Allie has some uh, ways that you introverts can make some money. We also have a great joke at the end that you don't want to miss. Hey, listen, Monday through Friday, you know, our podcasts are just perfect when you're on the go, you're walking, you're driving, just chilling at home, and we can be your virtual companion everywhere. We have so much fun. We just laugh and chat about all things digital. The only weird thing is that if you are on a walk and you start laughing out loud, people will think, (laughs) that person's just crazy with a capital C. (laughs) So try to keep it in. So again, wherever you get your podcasts, and I know that you do get this podcast, but make sure that you get all of our podcasts. Just uh, make sure that you get uh, the Daily Tech Update and Kim Commando today every single day of the week. All right, so Allie, this is where we depend upon you to tell us how we can make some money in some new and unique ways. Yeah, and you know, so many of these ideas honestly are for people that are really personable or social or don't mind I don't know, the customer service kind of aspect. Sure. Listen, I don't want somebody in my car, uh, so I'm not going to do Uber. Or lift. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot right. of these jobs, you just have to do so much people pleasing. Yeah. And that's not for everybody. That might be tough for you. So what are some jobs you can do where you don't really have to interact with strangers all that much? I am going to give some numbers, rough estimates of how much these pay. But as always, keep in mind, this really depends on your experience, your skill level, the exact thing you're doing, where you live, what phase of the moon it is. Not that, but there are a lot of factors that go into it. <laughs> 
Social media management. Speaking of social Hmm. media, you write posts, you respond to comments and messages, you manage the profile. If you are good with words, if you are good with people, but, you know, through a computer screen, which is a totally different skill, um, this might be for you. Hourly rate really depends anything from 15 bucks an hour to 50 bucks an hour. Hmm. Although some social media managers, they actually have a retainer fee for a monthly fee or, you know, project based. And that can be thousands of dollars. So if you are good at talking to people online, might be for you. Oh, wait, but wait, there's wait, more. there's more because because we need a social media manager. Hey. So if anybody's listening right now mm-hmm. and if you have really good social media skills and we want you to be excited for the opportunity, we want you to be happy. We want you to have experience and we don't want any fluff. Okay. <laughs> We want to see real examples is that we have that job posted at commando.com slash careers. I'm sorry, Allie. I just, I know we need to fill this job. <laughs> and I bet you there's somebody who's listening right now who says, I can it's do me. that. Or maybe yes. you know somebody. Yes, yes. Do that. If it's you, apply. And in the notes, let us know that you heard about this on the podcast. What about if you have very different skills, virtual bookkeeping? This one is pretty cool because you can make a lot of money here. 25 to $75 per hour, kind of the norm here, depends on how complex the tasks are and you know the detail required. But that is a good one if you don't want to work an office job anymore, but you still want to use those skills. And this one I love, voiceovers. Mm. Now, let's be well, honest. Excuse me, I mean, did you say that you needed a voiceover? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, this could be tough to get into, but if you have a good voice, if you're that person that people have said to you, you should consider radio or have you ever done it? You know, we know those people, right? That have excellent speaking voices and they've just never done anything with it. They have a face for radio. We like to say. Exactly. Yes. Uh, You might be able to be a voice actor. You can earn a lot of money for this stuff up to like hundreds of dollars an hour, depending on the project. Some things are flat rate for a project. I would say start yourself out on a site like Upwork or Fiverr, get some good stuff under your belt and then you go for the big ones. Um, we will have all these posted, of course, over at commander.com, along with way more ways you can make money from home. Yes, legitimate ways. Yes. So do not, do not, do not just Google search, make money at home. No. That would be the absolute worst thing to do. All right. So, okay, I am being prepared to just LOL forever and ever. So, Allie, we're ready for the joke. I said a three. I don't know what you're talking about. Um <laughs> I will give the warning. This joke's a little long, but I think it's worth it, so stick with me. All right. A nun walks into the mother superior's office and sits down and sighs. What troubles you, sister? Mother superior says. Wasn't this the day you were spending with your family? It was. And I went to play golf with my brother. As you might remember, I was quite a talented golfer before I devoted my life to Christ. I recall that, the mother superior said. So was your day of recreation not relaxing? Oh, far from it. In fact, I took the Lord's name in vain today. Oh my gosh, sister. Uh, Tell me about it. What happened? Well, we were on the fifth tee, and this hole is a monster, mother. 540 yard par five. There's a nasty dog leg right and a hidden green, and I hit the drive of my life. The sweetest swing I have ever made. It's flying straight and true, right along where I wanted, and it hits a bird mid-flight. Oh, Mother Superior says, how unfortunate. Surely that didn't make you blaspheme, sister. No, 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 it wasn't that. I was trying to fathom what had happened, and then a squirrel ran out of the woods, grabbed the ball, and ran down the fairway. That would have made me blaspheme, Mother Superior said. No, it didn't, Mother, and I was so proud of myself. And while I was pondering whether this was a sign from God, a hawk swept out of the sky, took the squirrel, flew off with the ball clutched in its paws, So that's when you cursed, the mother said. No, no, it wasn't that either. The (laughs) hawk started to fly out of sight. The squirrel was struggling. The hawk dropped him, and the ball popped out of his paws and rolled about 18 inches from the cup. Mother Superior sat back in her chair, folded her arms across her chest, looked at the sister and said, You missed the f***ing putt, didn't you? (laughs) 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 All right. You know, I'm on a golf team now. 
So I'm going to have to... There's a joke for I'm you. I'm going to have to use that, although it's a really long joke. I'll have to wait till after we're done. <laughs> you can shorten it up. But what I really like about the group and the tournament that I play in is that you don't have to be a good golfer because, like, I, you know, I, I claim that I'm, I have a handicap. Okay. I only have one eye. Okay. Go ahead. Try to play golf with one <laughs> eye, you know? <laughs> so I get to tee it up in a fair way along the way. See? Mm. Nice, Ooh. nice. All right. Very so nice. this has been just a phenomenal podcast, of course, as always, just another one. And this is part of the podcast before we leave you. We're giving you just a couple of things that we want you to remember before we sign off. So, Matt, you go first. You know, if you want to catch companies that are selling your data, try out that Gmail trick. Again, it's your email plus and then the uh, site that you're using and then at Gmail. It's super helpful. Try it out. And what about you, Al? And mine is Google, too. If you are sharing documents with people often, just remember, make a clean copy so they can't see everything you've done before. And um, maybe go to your Google Docs and spy around a little bit, see if you see anything funny. <laughs> and, you know, and my tip is just, hey, get the newsletters, be a tech pro, just five minutes a day. That's it. I'm telling you, we are all I'm talking about. We everybody who's sitting around this table right now. We are working so incredibly hard on these newsletters. And of course, we have other team members, too. But it is it's it's probably I think it's one of the best products we have ever, ever, ever put out. And so if you used to get the newsletters and you unsubscribe because you didn't like the ads, you didn't like you were getting so many during the day, commando.com slash subscribe. You're just going to love, love, love them. And we appreciate your comments, your ratings at the end of every single newsletter. And if you ever want to send us your thoughts here, just uh, send a note to podcasts at commando.com. Once again, that's podcasts at commando.com. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you again on the next podcast. This program is a copyrighted production of West Star Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of West Star Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited. I pity the fool 